Bleach is coming back and I think it's about time that we get a brand new video game already. But to make something new in the future we must first look back at what was done in the past. What have developers tried to do with Bleach? How much of it was good and how much can they learn from their mistakes? Back in the day there was a healthy amount of Bleach games by Bandai Namco, Konami, Sega and Nis America. Everyone tried something different but we didn't see a lot of those games here in the West. From a total of 25 games released in Japan we only saw 6 of them released in Europe and North America. And I'm about to rank all of them. Now, yes, I realize that I'm perhaps missing some fan favorites by leaving Japan only games out of this, but my rules for the ranking are as usual. If I can't understand the game's language, I can't review it. Other rules include I have to finish the games, or at least story mode, unless story mode is extremely bland and repetitive and the focus of the game is on something else. If the game has any unlockables beyond that, I'll have a look at the process, but if it's tedious, I'll also be passing. And we can't get started until we hear a word from today's sponsor, Manscaped.com. April is National Testicular Cancer Awareness Month. So while I remain a fan of Manscaped's tools and formulations, I want to take a second to talk about men's health issues that are important to me. Every hour, every day, a man is diagnosed with testicular cancer. And Manscaped has partnered with the Testicular Cancer Society to spread awareness for men's health and early cancer detection. I have multiple cases of cancer in my family. I lost a grandfather to cancer. My mom's been to the hospital multiple times. My grandmother as well. Cancer is very present in my life, so I do all I can to stay ahead of it. And detecting it early can be as easy as performing simple routine self checks at home. Manscaped sent me these crop mop ball wipes so I can stay clean and check myself on the regular. If you want to learn how to check yourself for early signs of cancer, visit manscaped.com TCS and share their funny video to help save lives and balls. Thanks to the lawnmower body hair trimmer, I'm also shaving my body a lot more often because it's so much easier than shaving myself with the cheap blades that I used to shave with, which also reminds me to check myself for those early signs. And as always, you can use code GLOBCO for 20% off plus free shipping and manscaped.com. Join the Manscaped movement and don't forget to take care of your pair and thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Now where to begin? Let's go to the first Bleach console game released in the West. Konami presents Bleach Shattered Blade, a Bleach fighting game on the Wii, using motion controls exclusively. Because it's motion controls, the fighting systems aren't too complex, but each character has their own unique special moves. So it's a game that you can definitely pick up and have some fun with a friend for about an hour or so, not because the game is good, because of the exact opposite. It becomes a funny fighting game because of how much bad stuff you will find. <laughs> As far as content goes, you've got a few hours of playtime if you want to unlock everything, but a lot of that content is the same. First you have episode mode, where you pick a character and go through a series of battles following a story, and the story is pretty much always the same. The character you picked is gathering shards for whatever goal they think is important, only to find out that you were deceived! The shards you gathered only served to free this game's original character, Arturo Plateado. So you defeat him and he says this. I'm vanishing! I'm vanishing! Yeah! The credits roll and now it's time to start over with a brand new character. Arturo was the biggest clickbait I've ever seen in a Bleach game. I remember picking this thing up and thinking, wow, look at that cool art of Ichigo fighting Grimjaw. That's not Grimjaw. You can unlock Grimjaw by playing the arcade mode, but this is this game's original character, Arturo Plateado. They clearly knew what they were doing with this character art. But yeah, it's a pretty simple fighting game. I don't think motion controls really fit this genre at all. The game ends up being a bit shallow as far as systems go, and the content is mostly just fighting the CPU with no modifiers. Bad game, E-rank. But you know what game is actually a decent fighting game? Street Fighter. But as far as Bleach goes, I was not expecting their Nintendo DS games to be that good. Bleach Blade of Fate is a 2D fighting game way more complex than I ever thought a Bleach fighting game could be on the Nintendo DS. You got air dashes, you got jump cancels, you got a ton of motion inputs for special attacks for each character, and pretty complex motions too. This isn't your typical casual anime fighter. Although I guess you can also tap the specials on the bottom screen if the motions are too hard. One of my favorite features of this fighting system is Chumpo cancels. There's a bar at the bottom that depletes every time you do a flash step. And you can do these to get out of pressure or you can do the mid combo after any normal attack which creates some crazy routes. And characters are pretty unique from what I tried. This is a really awesome fighting game at its core. Now there's some stuff that I don't like. Uh, for instance, you can tap the bottom screen to just add some bullshit. Because they couldn't commit to a fighting game, they needed to add the bullshit. Your character can also turn around facing away from the opponent, so especially if your inputs aren't clean, you 
may end up sending some Getsuga Tensho's to nobody. The input buffer windows are also kind of weird, especially on jump cancels. For some reason, you need to jump extra early. I just could never get used to that timing. After playing so many fighting games with jump cancels, this one just felt super odd. And finally, it's a fighting game on the Nintendo DS. Not the coolest platform for clean inputs, for playing comfortably, not to mention a complete pain to play with other players. Now, there's a story mode that I just loathe. First, it's just a series of battles, nothing special. But then it's like, you fight Renji, and then Kenpachi shows up, so you fight Kenpachi. And then, oh look, it's the end of the game. Not yet, Byakuya. So you fight Renji again. Same dialogue, same fight, and then I guess Kenpachi isn't here anymore. But look, it's Mayuri. So you kick Mayuri's ass, and here's the end of the game. But no, not yet, Byakuya. So you go back to Renji. You, you could at least disguise the padding a little bit. God damn. There's an arcade mode too, and combo challenges, baby. Too many fighting games come out nowadays on proper home consoles without combo challenges, so I was not expecting combo challenges on a Nintendo DS game. This is so awesome, not only for learning new characters, but for exploring the game's systems to their maximum. I love this mode so much, I was just not expecting it here. I love it. I would actually rank this game pretty high if it was on a console that was easy to play multiplayer with. You know, a home console where you can have two controllers and just invite a friend over. Or maybe a console with some decent online multiplayer so you can link up with other friends from other parts of the world. But this is the Nintendo DS. You gotta invite a friend over, they gotta have a DS and they gotta have a copy of the game. So in the end, it feels like the single player content is all that you can do most of the time. And outside the combo challenges, I don't think the single player content is very fun. So, D rank. And because the Nintendo DS is where you send fighting games to die, it only makes sense to make a sequel. Bleach, Dark Souls, a game you probably heard of because of its title. Haha, <laughs> funny, Dark Souls, but it's Bleach. I heard the funny before, I didn't even know this was a fighting game. It pretty much is Blade of Faith with a bunch of improvements. First of all, story mode is actually enjoyable. You can go down different paths, tackle different missions, get some keys to unlock more missions. And the missions themselves aren't just battles now. You've got some quirky stuff like collect the most candy or protect Hanataro from attackers. Narratively, it takes place between the Soul Society arc and the Hueco Mundo, also known as Filler Hell, so I guess we don't need to pay attention to that. They doubled the roster for this game, and I didn't unlock every character available, but I looked them up on YouTube, and there's a playable Menos Grande, and also the iconic character, Nurse. They were definitely having fun with this game. A total of 44 characters, a lot of them seem to be joke characters and they feel very incomplete, like they don't even have a full list of specials or moves. But even if you discount the joke characters, this is a really big roster for a fighting game. Dark Souls is a better game all around than Blade of Fate, but outside story mode, which was definitely improved, the same problems I had with the first game still persist. Characters turning around, weird buffer windows, being on the Nintendo DS. In fact, they expanded the bullshit systems, you know, the ones where you tap on the bottom screen to make your opponent crouch or whatever. It's a whole thing with a point cap and a loadout that you can equip. Way too complicated for something that I want to ignore completely. But they did something unforgivable, something I will never forget. They removed the combo challenges. It's easy to see why, 44 characters creating combo challenges for all of them, that's a lot of work. But god damn it, you removed the best thing the game had! D rank. So sad. Now, we have a saying in my country that goes No a duas sem tres. Don't you put subtitles on that. Don't you fucking dare put subtitles on that. So obviously they made another one. Bleach Third Phantom. Is it another fighting game? <laughs> no. Sir, if it's not a fighting game, shouldn't we call it something else? Jerry, you gotta trust me on this. We're gonna call it Bleach 3. But why, sir? It's not even the same game series. Ah, but yes it is. It is The Bleach on the Nintendo DS. But won't fans be confused by this? Won't they buy it expecting a sequel to Dark Souls? I can see why you're confused, but we're also working on a new Bleach game. It's a side-scroller. We'll only release it in Japan, and we're gonna call it Bleach 4, my son. Dad? Third Phantom is one of the worst tile-based strategy games I have ever played. And I was actually in the mood to play one of these games as I missed the Full Metal Alchemist mobile so much after playing that beta. But that urge to play this genre faded off immediately with the first combat encounter. Also, I'm wearing this now, which won't be a problem at all in the comments. First, let's select the character and we're gonna move right next to that hollow over there. We just gotta press OK to confirm the movement. All right, now let's just do a simple attack. You know, basic stuff. We get this screen uh, where we can check the attack advantages and stuff. It's like Fire Emblem. Let's just confirm the attack right here. And we're watching a movie. That's... 
some slashes okay and that's a, that's a big attack that's a big attack is that electricity that, that's that's gotta hurt oh and the the hollow is still gonna attack back how is this still not over that was way too long for a simple attack now we're gonna go through this for all characters and then we're gonna go through this again for all the enemy character attacks and we keep repeating this until the encounter is over there's just so much fluff in the most basic of turns that it just bloats the entire game making it more painful than it needs to be all the missions i've played so far also just have the same enemies they may look different but they don't make you play different encounters don't get much more interesting than this eventually you can build your own team and as you level up you get more abilities your characters can do more stuff but your enemies don't really offer a different challenge other than they have bigger numbers tile based strategy games often have different units that you fight against that make you change your strategy that's what the whole genre is about you may have an enemy healer or a character that summons other monsters that you must prioritize or maybe a boss character that charges an attack for two turns only to then kill everyone in a radius so you gotta get the hell out of there this game has none of that and that's a shame because the story is actually really awesome this might be the best bleach story in a video game you start by selecting a male or a female character they're both brothers and the story changes slightly depending on who you pick and it's set in a time period before bleach even begins so you got aizen as a lieutenant before he goes all god mode on everyone you meet a bunch of known characters as kids living in the outskirts of the city and without spoiling much there is some time time skip stuff so these characters that you meet as kids you then meet them again in the present and they all outrank the protagonists and it's very fun to see how they react to that i like the main story it also has a lot of filler that could definitely be cut out between chapters you can select who you want to talk with during free time and none of this matters when i started playing this i was so ready to rank it at f but just because the story is so cool i'm gonna rank it at the bottom of e Okay, we're done with the Nintendo DS games. Let's move on to the game that started this whole journey of Bleach games for me, Soul Resurrection, for the PlayStation 3. I never had a PS3 growing up, so when I saw this game, I thought, this looks awesome, and I'm really missing out. And then I grew up to be 32 years old, and I could finally afford my own PlayStation 3. Turns out, it's still a gorgeous game, even nowadays, and that's pretty much all it has going for it. It's a 3D hack and slash that is absurdly simplistic, and that's something you just don't want to see in your hack and slash games or even your musou games this has kind of a musou dna to it you want to have options to be creative you're going to be slashing through hundreds of enemies it's nice to be able to change things up once in a while to put some style in your combos this game doesn't really let you do that so it becomes very repetitive they actually had some very good ideas for each character they feel unique every time you pick someone up it's just that each one of them individually can't do much so if you want variety you just gotta constantly change characters and i wish there was more depth to each one of them. The story loosely follows the Hueco Mundo arc. I say loosely because there's barely any storytelling. It's pretty much just some text on a loading screen and then you just play. There's a mission mode where you go through hordes of hollows, usually with a boss fight at the end. And to their credit, boss fights are usually pretty unique. Some of them actually fun. Some of them. You unlock characters the more you play and each one of them has a talent tree that gets expanded the more characters you unlock. And that's basically your progression. I know a lot of folks out there still like this game and will defend it until the day they die. In my opinion that's because it's one a beautiful game and two it's bleach and there are some crazy bleach fans out there which i understand but it doesn't make the game good e rank and after that hot take that will certainly not cause any angry comments we move on from the playstation 3 to the playstation 4 that's right a Bleach PS4 game. It's Brave Souls, a mobile port. Looking at this game right next to Soul Resurrection, it is crazy how similar these two are, but Soul Resurrection fans would be the first ones to call this mobile garbage. So let's look at both of them side by side. You got a bunch of missions that are pretty much identical. You can get through them with very little effort with any character of your choice. And each character also has some unique abilities, even though their whole moveset is very limited. Now, the art style is obviously different and so is the perspective, but it's crazy to me how similar the gameplay loop between these two games is. That said, the goal for these games is very different because this one is a gotcha. So you aim to level up your characters or get more currency for more character pools. And on PS4 they actually give you so much currency that it never felt like I needed to grind for materials or wait for stamina to recharge. That said, it's a game that doesn't feel like it has a lot of content. It has a lot of missions, a lot of bosses and a lot of enemies. Wait, isn't that content? Well, let me explain. 
If you play a level in a park, and then you play a level in a city, but both of these levels have the exact same layout, the same collectibles, and the same enemies, did you play two different levels, or did you play the same level twice, just with a different skin? That's what I mean. And that goes for the whole game. Even boss fights aren't that different from each other, because you can take any character into battle, and there are hundreds of characters, so of course boss fights can't be super unique. Otherwise, they may not work with the character you want to take into battle. It's a big gacha at its core, and it does get challenging at some point, not because you need to improve at the game, not because you need to get good, it gets challenging because you need to level up. You need your numbers to be bigger because your enemies' numbers are getting bigger too. Some people play this to tackle those harder bosses, others just want to collect characters, which to their credit, they've added some wacky characters to this game over time. Still, it's a gacha that you play to do more gacha, and when there's not a lot of content beyond the gacha, I just don't see a lot of value in it. E rank. And that's the ranking of Bleach games. I am ready for this one to go very wrong in the comments. But uh, what do you want me to do? Lie? This is how I feel about these games. And it's my ranking. You don't have to agree. If nothing else, I hope you enjoyed hearing a fresh take on these games or remembering the Bleach games of the past. I might come back to this list once I learn Japanese and I'm ready to tackle the Japan-only games. But if that happens, it will be a while. In the meantime, don't forget about today's sponsor, Manscaped. Remember to check yourself and save those balls. And as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Globku, and I'll see you next time. Boy!